Michelle Barone, your host, and I am here with Gregory, my fellow in pink over here, your co-host, and Ashley McPherson, your co-host. So excited to have them here on Red. Today we have a really special guest. He's a badass from San Diego, California. My friend, Clark Bartram. Hey, Clark, what's up? Yeah! Let's go. Clark, where the hell have you been my whole life? That's what I want to know. Sitting right here waiting for you for this moment in time. Like, it, the planets have aligned. Here we go. It's about ready to explode. Let's go, baby. So, Clark, I want to know, my cheeks, like, literally hurt from smiling so hard. <laughs> You're so awesome. Before we get started, can you just show me your guns? Like, that's really all I want to see here. Yeah. That's it right there. I love it. All right. So, so do those curls for the girls, as they say. <laughs> that's right. Curls for the girls. I love it. So, Clark, talk to me. Tell me about your fitness. You know, I know you're big into fitness, and I want to learn your regimen, how you do it. What do you do? Tell us everything. So I wake up every day with an intention to get better, just physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, and all of that. And I believe that we can't do that to the level we could if we're not in the shape that we should be in. Does that make sense? Do I need to repeat that? We can't get to the level that we could get at if we're not in the shape that we should be in. So at the age of 59, I feel like I'm better now than I was when I was 39, 29, and that's no BS. I really feel great. So I wake up in the morning, got up this morning at 4. I had my food this morning because I'm actually doing Ramadan right now. I'm not Muslim, but I'm practicing the Ramadan fast with my friends who I train with. So I got up this morning at 4 a.m. I ate, made sure I got my food and my water in before the fast started. And I went to the gym, got a great workout, got my cardio in, just like anybody else, right? It's not rocket science. It's pretty easy. You just got to be consistent with it. That's right. Consistency is really the key to so many things, not only for the gym, but for everything, your relationships, work, any goal you have, it's always consistency. That's what I found. Absolutely. Even parenting. Yeah which is, you know, always a big thing. Um, so tell me how it is to train others and what motivates you and inspires you to train others. So I feel like I was born to do what I do. Right now, currently, what I do is I coach men over 50 all around the world. So I don't really have people here. I've got a couple guys physically in my gym at my house, but most of the men that I train are around the world. And these are men who have accomplished pretty much everything in their life. They've been successful in business, they have the big home, the fancy car, and all that sort of thing, second or third marriage sometimes. But they come to me because they said, man, I got everything but that body. I want that body, man. How do I get it? And I honestly believe that I was created to do what I do because I absolutely love it. You, you know the saying, right? We know we're not working when we wake up and love what we do. I don't go to work. I just wake up with an opportunity to speak into men's lives and help them make positive change. Oh, my God. I love it. You are so motivational. I can, like, feel it. I love it. That's incredible. You know, I want to know about the six-pack abs. How would you develop that program, and why is it so important to you? So I think, well, I, I've been a model for years, right? I've been on hundreds of magazine covers, and I've said this before in one of my books. Consider your abs the entrance to the party, right, the, the ticket to the party. If, if you want to be in this industry and be considered – on any level as successful. Like if, if you saw me online, for example, and I had my shirt off and I was saying, Hey, I coach men over 50. I can help you get in the greatest shape of your life. And I don't have visible six pack apps that are there all the time. I'm not going to be taken seriously. So it's important for me as a selling tool. It's important for me because I've got pride, man. I love to look good. I like showing up at the beach with my 28 year old son and have college kids come up to me and walk up and say, hey, how do you get the way you get? And have my son watch that. That's an example for me, not just for those college kids, but also for my son to take care of this one this one special, precious gift that we have, our body, man. That's right. That's right. And, you know, every time you lift up your shirt, I just have to mention, I think you have more than six pack abs. You have like 12 packs. and Then you got the side ab, too. So I don't know how many you actually have, but I do like the program name. It is good for the average Joe, just not for you, because you know what? You got more than six. So 
Right. How did you get your start on social media? I want to know what inspired you to get your start, get out there, motivate people. I know you wake up for this. You're living your purpose, which is amazing. But how did you get your start? So it's just a natural evolution. Social media for me was magazines. Like I've, like I said, I've been on quite a few magazine covers. That was the social media of the time in the 80s and the 90s before social media became a thing. And the way I got into it was I was kind of forced into it by business coaches. They're like, hey, dude, listen, if you don't get up with the times, like the magazine era is gone. There's hardly any bodybuilding magazines anymore that you can pick up and, and thumb through like this, for example. But this is my most recent one right here. Yeah. And still to this day, I'm getting on magazine covers, but it's, it's not a thing anymore. And I, what I love about this one right here, look at that intro, it says pushing 60. So, but my, my business coach said, Clark, if you don't get on social media and start doing something, you're going to be left behind. And I certainly don't want to do that because I have got a message to share with the world. So I got on it and slowly, but surely figured out my niche. I figured out how I blew up on TikTok. I got 1.2 million on TikTok and I did it with something called three moats, three minutes. I do three exercises, one minute each, and that blew up on TikTok. That's amazing. That is so cool. Tell us how that started too. Was it just those three moves, three minutes, or did you have other things that kind of gave you the leverage and the platform on TikTok? Well, obviously the ability to communicate is huge because you can go on there and if people don't want to listen to you, if you're not engaging it, if you don't hold their attention, they're going to scroll right to the next person. So I had to come up with that hook and then get them to stay there. So sometimes you rip your shirt off, right? And that keeps it going. But the three moves, three minutes was the catalyst for growth. Now I've kind of moved into more motivational, more encouragement. I'm doing a lot of reels videos that are edited to a really high level. If you go on my Instagram, you'll see that. I do a lot of football trick shots. It's something I'm known for. So yeah. that's another thing that did well on TikTok. So you have to constantly be reinventing yourself, but stay in your lane, as they say. If you're getting outside and you're trying to be Gary Vee and you're not Gary Vee, you're trying to be some person that you're not, people are going to sniff it out real quick and they're going to move on to the next person. You're absolutely right. A hundred percent. You're staying in your lane, making sure you're doing exactly what, you know, who you are and what you are. Like you said, it might be taking the shirt off one day, but the next day it's those football tricks. And by the way, I do like your TikTok. I think it's incredible. And I think it's super motivational. Um, who have you helped? How have you helped get to their next level? Can you give us an example of someone you've helped reach their goal? Now, not mentioning the millions of people you've helped on TikTok who don't even say anything, right? Because those are the people you're inspiring on a daily basis. Who have you helped to really get to that next level that you know personally? You can say, man, I'm really proud of that that I've done here. Literally, I wake up every single day to a message from some man saying, thank you for helping me change my life. One name comes to mind right away guy named Rob. Rob, I sat right here and he responded to one of my call to actions online and said, yes, I'm ready or whatever it was. And then I called him up and he started hemming and hawing like people do. Oh, I don't know if I got the money. I don't know if I got the time. I don't... When he had just told me I'm going to die if I don't do this. So this is a year ago. Fast forward to today. Rob is now a coach in my program, down 80 pounds, changing other men's lives because yeah. he decided to say yes and follow the path. It's not hard. All we got to do is help people get over themselves, right? Anytime someone comes up to a decision, they're always going to have an obstacle get, that gets in the way. And, and the obstacle is, if they look in the mirror, it's themselves. Excuses, BS, crap that comes up. So I have to become an expert at helping them navigate that BS and get to a, an action-taking moment in their life. You know what? Everything you just said boils down to the thing that's behind you. One life, right? You have one life to make it count, to make a difference. And like you did with Rob, I'm sure you've done with so many others. So thank you so, so much. What is something that people misunderstand about you? I know you're high energy. You know, sometimes you struggle with authenticity because of that, right? People are always like, oh, how can you be that excited all the time? Or, you know, but what is something that, that, you know, allows people to misunderstand you? And, and what do you want to say about it? 
social media allows people to under, misunderstand me because I, I do come off hot. I come off aggressive. I seem cocky and arrogant, but people misinterpret the confidence for cockiness. I'm confident. I can walk in any room, anywhere, anytime, but make other people feel special, loved, and appreciated because they should be. Not that I'm better and they're worse. And that's the problem with social media is because you have three seconds and someone makes a judgment call of you already. And it hurts my heart when someone says, oh, this guy is so-and-so, or they, they have a wrong interpretation of who I am. And I always say this, man, if a guy comes at me and, and I get a troll, I come back at him and I say, listen, bro, DM me. I'll give you my phone number. And 100 times out of 100, if it were that many, the guy will say, man, I'm sorry. I was just having a bad day. It usually ends up that being the case. I was just having a bad day. You're actually a really nice guy. Right. Absolutely. Hit it head on. I think that's a great way to handle it. DM me. Take it offline. And let's talk about this, you know, because don't misunderstand me. Like, I, I totally can relate to that 100%. There's so many people that misunderstand you for no reason. It's it's wild, especially on social. Yeah. And especially because... How can you misunderstand a man wearing a suit like that? That's just... <laughs> he's making statements right there. There's no misunderstanding that. That man <laughs> has got style. He's got class. He's got confidence. And he's cool. Look at him. Just chilling. I mean, look at him. I appreciate that. That means it's for real. Should that. Look at his outfit. Look at his shoes. I mean, literally, this bow tie. Like, where do you even get this? He's got this pin in his hat. He is amazing. Seriously, I met him out, Clark, and I was like, listen, I don't know who you are, what you do, but you're coming on the show just because I want you to look like this. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> I, I could see why. I mean, the only other guy that's got even close to that kind of style is Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could see that. He's very unique, my friend Gregory here. Yes. So tell me about someone that's influenced you. You know, you're high energy, you're impactful, you're killing it on TikTok. You're, you know, 39 years old forever, right? How do you do it? Who's influenced you? And, uh, you know, what was their role in, in influencing you? So I don't think anyone there on your panel will remember or know this name, but Jack LaLanne was the original person who brought fitness to America on television back in the 1950s. And Jack lived to be about 96 years old, and he was truly the pioneer of health and fitness. He's legendary. I would encourage you guys to go Google him after this. But I had the opportunity to have a contract, the same contract with Jack Lane, and we traveled the country together. And he poured into my life, and he taught me so much about how to love people. And he didn't even say a word. I witnessed him. I watched him. There's, there's a saying that says, in all things, be a witness, and if necessary, use words. I just watched this man, how he engaged with people. And then when he did pour into me, I was an open book and an open heart and open mind and really am carrying on, in my opinion, I'm carrying on his legacy. And his wife even said that to me a while ago when I had her on my Zoom call with the men that I coach. She said, Clark, Jack loved you so much. And it almost brings me to tears to think about it because the man truly is a legend. We throw that word around a lot, but Jack Lane is truly a legend, not just in the fitness world, but as someone who's motivated a lot of people to live a better life. Oh, wow. That was inspiring just hearing you talk about him. That's incredible. How do you stand out among the crowd? You know, there's so many people talking about fitness on social media, so many people with their tips. Yeah. Man, look at me. Look at me. That's how I stand out. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. Are you still? It's like my man Gregory there. We, you know, you 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 make a statement. You stand out by energy, right? There, I I think the most powerful. There's a there's something that one of my clients gave me on my wall right here, a, a picture. Sometimes you don't even realize how you light up rooms and inspire people just by being you. You are literally magnetic, and you don't even know it. And Wayne Steele, one of my guys, he sent that to me. That's what I think we all have. Right. We would not be doing what we're doing if we didn't possess that energy that surrounds us beyond the clothes, beyond the beauty, beyond everything that we have. Right. It's the energy that surrounds us that makes people go. There's something about that person. Yeah. I'm going to trust them. You know what I mean? And then, boom, we go do what we do. That's 100 percent true. 
And you know what? I think, too, it's authenticity, man. I said it in the beginning. I'll say it again. Like, you can see your authenticity. You can feel it. And sometimes people are intimidated by that. Do you ever find that either in public or online? When people tell me I'm intimidating, it trips me out because some intimidating people have told me I'm intimidating. But every intimidating person probably has the same thought and conversation in their head of, I wonder why they feel that way because I don't intentionally come in that way. I just come in with that energy and enthusiasm and that that aura around me and that might set people off because I don't think they're used to it. We get used to people just kind of being, I don't know, less than excited and, and I never want to be that person. I want to show up like this everywhere. And I do, like this is legitimately me. Yep. I deal with that all the time. So much relativity. It's true. You do. I mean, you're judged before someone even talks to you. We have to call. We had a conversation recently, not even, you know, being misread. Yeah, it's true. So how do you handle that? What do you do in that moment? I mean, I ask questions to get feedback to see, you know, what the people see from their lenses. Um, also, through self-teaching and knowing what I possess, it'll help me give clarity to answers that people can't answer. So I get a little bit of a better understanding. Like to me, I'm just being me, but to everyone else, it's just like, it's almost like surreal. Like they don't know how to box you. They don't know how to put a label on you pretty much. We've talked about this. And you know what? That's something you struggle with too sometimes. It's like, they don't know how to position you. Like, who are you, right? So, I mean, I think that social media helps define that in ways that you do it again, creating that hook. Something like that will help. Um, and I think it's interesting, man. Just do you. Be you, right? That's what you got to do. The key for me is to never fit in. If everybody's going right, I'm going left. If you tell me to fit in, that's like telling me to dress like everybody else. That's against my religion. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Absolutely. So, Clark, we're going to play a little bit of a game. Are you ready? Yeah, ask let's go. Some we're going to ask you, fire out some questions, just have you answer them really quickly and um, see if you can get get it done quick. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So what do you eat for breakfast? Whatever I feel like. <laughs> that's it? Wait. wait yeah. that, that's no routine at all? Nothing? Your favorite? No. So if I want Chinese food for breakfast, no. I'm, I'm good? If, if I feel like it, I eat it. If I want salmon, I eat it. You want to know what I ate this morning? Yeah. yeah. So I had some leftover beef and peppers that I made last night that was so good. I dreamt about it. And I'm like, man, I'm going to have that in the morning. <laughs> so people would judge me like, you had that for breakfast? Yeah. Why? Because I wanted it. It tasted good. And it's protein and great carbohydrates. All right. I like it. What's your first workout of the day? Whatever's up for the day. So today was arms. I did cardio for 40 minutes and then I actually no I didn't do arms I did my can I say ass on here I did, I did my ass Glute, gluteus maximum I, I did my gluteus maximus man yeah I some friend of mine in the gym said hey let's let's train some glutes I'm like if it's good enough for the girls it's good enough for the guys let's go <laughs> I love it I love it what's your favorite body part I would say abs <laughs> all right all right I thought you were gonna say something else thank god you didn't <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> on on a male or female i guess that's the question i need to throw back right yeah. huh? wait what do you say myself yeah on yourself on yourself yes okay yeah abs um can you give us your workout routine weekly in 30 seconds or less just back legs shoulders arms 30 minutes of cardio after and then 30 minutes of cardio at night Woo! that's amazing <laughs> Two more. Favorite food to eat on a cheat day? On a cheat day, pizza and cheesecake. Ooh, that's my favorite too. I love cheesecake. Pizza. Pizza? Cheesecake bomb. Every day? Every day. Half, cheat yeah, day. Half a pie for lunch every day. Oh my God. Okay. What's your favorite food to eat regularly and something that everyone else should eat if they're trying to maintain their physique like you? Salmon and asparagus. All right. All right. Well, thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Clark, you are like the best. I don't know where you came from, like I said, but I'm so glad you're here now. And uh, next time I come out to L.A., I'm going to have to come say hi. You're so awesome. Absolutely. We're going to work out at the gym. We'll have yes. some fun. Yes, yes, we'll eat yes. some salmon, asparagus, cheesecake, and pizza. <laughs> Can't wait. Clark, thank you so much. Where can people find you online? My Instagram is at Clark Bartram. My TikTok is the real Clark Bartram. And then you just Google me. I'm all over the place. All right. Make sure you check out my friend Clark. Thank you so much for joining us on Red. We'll see you next time, Clark. This episode is sponsored by Jador Fine Jewelry. Visit JadorFineJewelry.com.